Donald Sutherland passed away last week at the age of 88. He was one of the greatest and most prolific actors of his generation, his career in TV and film spanning from the 1960s all the way to the 2020s. He appeared in some of the most famous and acclaimed films ever made. He played lead roles, supporting roles, any kind of role imaginable. But you know what's something the incredible Donald Sutherland never received in his illustrious career? An Oscar nomination. That's right, seven decades in the movies and the Academy never once gave him a nom. Not for M.A.S.H., or for Clute, or for Don't Look Now, not even for Ordinary People, the 1980 Oscar winner for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best Supporting Actor. Why the hell was Sutherland never nominated? Where did he get nominations and wins throughout his career? And how did the Academy try to make up for their mistakes when it came to this remarkable actor just a few years back? My name is Brian Rowe, this is the awards contender, and let's begin Donald Sutherland in the elusive Oscar. He was born on July 17, 1935 in New Brunswick, Canada to Mother Dorothy and Father Frederick. He began his acting work on the stage before transitioning to film and TV work in the early 1960s, his first film roles being in horror movies like The Castle of the Living Dead. His first significant part in a film arrived in 1967 with The Dirty Dozen, where he co-starred with a who's who of big stars of the time. His true breakthrough was Robert Altman's 1970 war comedy M.A.S.H., where he played the lead role of Hawkeye Pierce. In this very popular movie that inspired an iconic TV series, Sutherland co-starred with Elliot Gould, Tom Skerritt, Robert Duvall, and Sally Kellerman as part of a staff of a Korean War field hospital. That piece isn't even close to his number. I know, I know, it's nothing, but look, how many times do you get to go to Japan with your golf clubs? Sure, <laughs> Critics pointed to Sutherland as one of the film's inspired standouts, and he received his first major nomination, Best Actor in a Motion Picture Comedy or Musical at the Golden Globe Awards, where Gould also got a nomination in the same category. Given that MASH did well at the 43rd Academy Awards, getting into Best Picture and Best Director, along with Best Supporting Actress for Kellerman, you'd think Sutherland might have had an outside chance of Best Actor, but he probably split a lot of votes with Gould, and the category was very competitive. Gould didn't make it in, and neither did Albert Finney, who had won the Golden Globe over Gould and Sutherland for his performance in Scrooge. Let's face it, it's true now, and it was true then. It's hard to get a Best Actor Oscar nomination for a comedic performance. Maybe he was going to have better luck with Clue a year later. He played the title role in the acclaimed Alan J. Pakula drama as a detective who turns to a New York prostitute for help in his search for a missing man. What else do you remember about the man who beat you up? Nothing. Except that he wasn't kidding, that's all. But you cannot identify this man as Tom Grunemann. Here's the thing with Clute. As good as Sutherland is in this one, the major powerhouse performance is by Jane Fonda as the prostitute Bree Daniel. She has such a haunting, magnetic quality about her that it makes sense she got all the awards' attention, winning three critics' prizes along with the Golden Globe Award and Academy Award for Best Actress. Fonda and Sutherland were dating at the time, and he was with her the night she won the Oscar for Clute. The next great Sutherland performance arrived in 1973 with the dazzling psychological drama Don't Look Now, directed by Nicholas Rogue. He and Julie Christie play a married couple grieving the death of their young daughter, and while they're in Venice, they meet two elderly sisters who insist they see their daughter's spirit. What's the matter? Nothing. The film is probably most famous for its explicit sex scene, but it's so much more than that. Don't Look Now is a compelling, emotionally resonant, beautifully shot and paced movie that is quite simply a must-see. Both Sutherland and Christie give fantastic performances, and I wonder if the genre element of Don't Look Now is what ultimately took away their Oscar chances. The film didn't receive a single Golden Globe or Academy Award nomination, which is outrageous, but thankfully BAFTA embraced it with seven nominations, including Best Film, Best Director, Best Actress for Christie, and Best Actor for Sutherland. He was actually nominated for two performances that year, Don't Look Now and Steelyard Blues. 
but he lost to Walter Matthau also for two performances and Charlie Varick and Pete and Tilly. Sutherland continued doing superlative work throughout the rest of the 1970s, including The Day of the Locust, 1900, The Great Train Robbery, and one of my favorites, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. But seriously, the best chance Donald Sutherland ever had at an Oscar nomination arrived in 1980 with his astonishing performance in Robert Redford's Ordinary People. We would have been all right. There hadn't been any mess. But you can't handle mess. You need everything neat and easy. Telling the story of how the accidental death of the older son puts a strain on the relationships in an affluent family, Ordinary People had a huge impact on critics and audiences, and the performances by Timothy Hutton, Mary Tyler Moore, and Sutherland were all lauded by many. This film did very well during the award season of early 1981, receiving eight Golden Globe nominations and winning five, including Best Film, Best Director, Best Actress for Moore, and Best Supporting Actor for Hutton, he might have lost, as expected, to Robert De Niro for Raging Bull, but Donald Sutherland was still rightfully recognized with a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actor in a Motion Picture Drama. With Ordinary People's extraordinary success and his marvelous performance as the father, come on, he had to get into the Oscars too, right? I mean, everyone else in that Golden Globe category went on to be nominated for Best Actor at the 53rd Academy Awards, John Hurt for The Elephant Man, Jack Lemmon for Tribute, Peter O'Toole for The Stunt Man, and De Niro for Raging Bull, obviously. At the Oscars, Ordinary People received six nominations, getting into picture, director, actress, adapted screenplay, supporting actor for both Hutton and Judd Hirsch, but absolutely criminally, I would say, not Sutherland in Best Actor. His slot went to Academy favorite Robert Duvall for The Great Santini, a solid showcase for the actor that should have been recognized a year earlier since technically the film opened in 1979, not 1980, under different titles. It seems fishy why Duvall qualified for this Oscar nomination in 1981. Also, Duvall would go on to win his Oscar and Best Actor for Tender Mercies in 1984, and so this just seems for Sutherland like a missed opportunity. Robert Duvall or the constantly nominated Jack Lemmon or Peter O'Toole could have been omitted from Best Actor in 1981, allowing Sutherland to receive one Oscar nomination in his long and celebrated career for that year's Best Picture winner. You know, I bet he was in sixth place. He had to have been close. Maybe some Academy members voted for him in Supporting Actor and not Lead Actor? Maybe some voters found his performance not quite as memorable or as striking as Moore's or Hutton's? I don't know. Whatever it was, it's totally ridiculous that Hutton wins the Oscar and Sutherland couldn't even be nominated. Donald Sutherland went on to give excellent performances in films like Eye of the Needle, A Dry White Season, JFK, Outbreak, Pride and Prejudice, and the Hunger Games franchise, just to name a few. If you can believe it, the only major award nomination Sutherland got for a theatrical film following Ordinary People was the Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actor for 1998's Without Limits, a true-life drama where he played the coach to famed runner Steve Prefontaine. Unfortunately, the film was so small and came out earlier in the year that the solid Sutherland performance just couldn't gather any momentum. When it comes to awards, Sutherland had much better success on the small screen. He received an Emmy nomination for the 2005 miniseries Human Trafficking, and he won an Emmy in the Supporting Actor category for the 1995 TV movie Citizen X. He also won a Golden Globe for Citizen X, a true crime story about Soviet authorities hunting down a serial killer. I couldn't find his Emmy speech, but here's an excerpt from his Golden Globe speech. It took a lot of help to get me through these 60 years, and well, I've known the Hollywood foreign press for so many years. I will, I will cherish this. Thank you. He also got Golden Globe nominations for Commander-in-Chief, Human Trafficking, Dirty Sexy Money, and The Undoing, and he won another Golden Globe and Best Supporting Actor for the 2002 TV movie Path to War about President Lyndon B. Johnson's debating the decision to withdraw from the Vietnam War. Here's an excerpt from that speech. Uh, to the seven wonderful actors who were equal parts of this octet that we're in in this category, I was given this because I'm older than you are. <laughs> which I think is only fair. 
Sadly, the right movie role to bring significant Oscar buzz just never arrived for Sutherland after Ordinary People, and so thankfully the Academy did the right thing and gave him something. At the 2017 Governor's Award, Sutherland received his much-deserved honorary Oscar for his contributions to cinema, a trophy that clearly meant the world to him. You know, I, I've never been nominated, so obviously I've never won one, and it was really the only way I was ever going to get one. <laughs> meant everything to me. Steven Spielberg, Colin Farrell, Jennifer Lawrence, Ron Meyer, and Whoopi Goldberg gave introductory speeches, Goldberg making Sutherland tear up. I want to be better. I want to make magic. And Donald Sutherland is one of the greatest magicians ever. So congratulations. And then Donald Sutherland, finally, after countless decades in the industry, got his moment on the Academy Awards stage. About frickin' time. This is very important to me, to my family. It's like a, like a door's opened, and a cool, wonderfully fresh breath of air has come in. In the words of the great Jack Benny, I don't deserve this, but I have arthritis and I don't deserve that either. <laughs> Thank you. Here's the thing, Mr. Sutherland, you did deserve that honorary Oscar along with so much more. I fell in love with you as an actor pretty much as soon as I fell in love with the movies and your presence in any project on the big screen or the small screen was always made better by your participation in it. I'm sad you never got a competitive Oscar nomination, but that doesn't diminish for a single second the magnitude of your cinematic legacy. Donald Sutherland, 1935 to 2024. What a life well lived. You were one of a kind, and we are really going to miss you.